Hello, Internet. I'm Jackie Fox, and there is something that people have asked me for that I have avoided doing, and that would be a video about future VCs. The reason that I have largely wanted to avoid doing this is because it mainly requires me talking about a bunch of job-based VCs, and job-based VCs are inherently hard to conceptualize. From the kind of user interface of how we are to understand it in-game especially, um, Woad of Calc helps this a bit, but it is still annoying to conceptualize. And what I said in my previous video about why I don't like the job-based VC, I, I do revise that opinion with this video, in that I have a better understanding of it, but I think a lot of my critiques are definitely applicable to JP because this has been incredibly unpredictable as what would become valuable down the road. It is still in that position in my opinion because job-based VCs only become a real viable alternative to the elemental standard that we are so used to in the meta when you have six of them because you need a full set because you're competing against full sets of elementals and they have other bonuses. So you need a full set of the strongest thing in the game which are job-based VCs which have higher thresholds. You need that additional power to even stand on the same ground like just raw power-wise um, or stats-wise with a fully elemental team even in the JP meta. The thing is, you can do cool things strategically with how you element your team and you have so... Well, actually, you don't have more flexibility, but you do. It's inflexible, but it also adds flexibility to the game. It's terrible, and I love it, and let's talk about it. So, the most important thing, as I said, is hitting critical mass, which is six cards for your job. And that has only happened in JP for four uh, of these classes. And it's going to be these four. And I'm going to talk about each of them first. You have Axe, which I think is really limited in terms of options and probably has the worst future. I mean, really, the only team that is even close to being meta viable is probably Vega, Moraga, and Summer Killfame. Now, that's going to become a better team when Summer Kilfay gets a Dream Enhancement this summer. But holy crap, we've got to wait until summer for that to even have a third. And, like, there's only two jobs for Axe, like, in terms of non-unique jobs. So, unless there's a new Axe job coming that's not unique, then, um... You might not be getting any new units for this, even though in theory it does have six uh, VCs already, and that selection is likely to get better in the future. So next, let's talk about Mace. We already have four of these VCs, if anybody... I'm sorry. No, I'm wrong. I'm glad I caught that. We don't have this VC yet. This is an important VC for the Strike meta as well. It's weird that we don't have it. It kind of messes with me because it's really late and it's... I, I don't know how this isn't a bigger thing. Um, so we only have three of these cards right now. One of them is very new, so we don't even have... We aren't anywhere near the threshold. If, assuming we do get this card makeup at some point, they just cram it in somewhere um, so that we can catch up. When we get to the point that... Uh, when we get to Full Metal Alchemist, at least, we will, in our free card, I think this is have our sixth mace VC, which means that two out of six of these are free, which is cool. But um, this also has a really limited composition of units at the moment that would be meta relevant. Um, in the, the two that I can really think of are going to be Mashery and Queen Mashery. Both of those I think could be potentially really good units and really good units with each other. They're going to need more of a DPS unit. I think that's what Rafu is going to be, and she's definitely a mace unit. So, Rafu is definitely going to be the third for this team. She's also probably going to come out right before either 
another Chaos Esper, please don't do that. Or a job base VC that adds a seventh Mace VC, at which point, even if we never get this VC, Global will have it sixth. Maybe that's how they're planning that out. I've talked a lot about Fist VCs on this channel, so I'm not going to really do any more, except to again say where it is at. And finally, something I've mentioned more and more lately is Glove. Um, this is another meta that might hit uh, Global later, because we have this as a Lightning VC, so that's probably going to set us back a bit. But... So actually, let's kind of remove Glove from the rest of this video. And I'm actually going to add in... No, let's look at Ninja Blade by itself for a second. Ninja Blade does have four VCs. Although... We have the Shadow Links on Ice VC, which is a fifth. So at this point, at, at Kefka, uh, Global would be five out of six. And I think that this is actually an interesting one because this is a free VC. And I think that it has an incredible synergy with everything these units are going to want to do. So definitely one to keep an eye on. And I think it's worthy of inclusion because of it. But actually, I think I'm going to skip Axe too, just because it has what I would think of any job, of, of any of these, it has the worst potential future except for, well, Shuriken is technically, I think, a mistake. Uh, that's supposed to be a part of Ninja Blade. Um, Katana maybe is in trouble? I don't know. Uh, book has really one class, so that might be trouble. Um, but it, it's among the worst in terms of odds that a new unit is going to come out for it. So let's look at the new cards that we have coming that are in these three types. So if you were planning for a Fist team, a Mace team, or a Ninja Blade team, you'll kind of have some more ideas. Again, we need this card. This is both crucial for the mace meta, but also the strike meta. And one thing that I think is really, really important about this card... ...and the units that it supports is... that it's also a gunner card and i think that gunners is going to be another one that is potentially really powerful into the future so this is a good investment into the future i also think that thematically this would probably be a really important card for gunners because you want to maximize you know getting some getting some unit agility is great um not great but there are magic gunners i'm not going to say there aren't um that couldn't benefit from that gunners love dexterity um, gunner versus gunner matchups, which, you know, fight fire with fire, sometimes it works. This really shores you up against that. AoE resistance really re protects you from barrage and from being crowd killed when you get too close to your tank. So all of these things are really good for gunners. I think this is going to be an important card for gunners in the future, but it's also really integral for two, uh, metas that are probably going to hit kind of critical mass early, uh, compared to the others. So where's that card at? This card's going to be free through a raid. I think it's a must-have because the setup of units for this is amazing. One thing that I want to show you is how good this is as a fire VC. Because if you're doing physical fire, all three? No, wait. Four of your options are listed here. Does it get better? I mean, there are also some fire, like, limited options for fire for this. Um, but this is a really good pseudo-fire card, at least right now. Um, it won't work as well with fire magic. It won't work as well with other... Is there really much other physical fire? Uh, Setia. Like, there's, there's a lot of things it won't work with, but if you're doing modern fire physical, this is basically a modern fire physical card. But in addition to that... A lot of this stuff is pretty generic, so this actually does kind of work beneficially for the mage subclasses that can get it. 
Um, it's pretty cool for Striders. They love all of this is a big Strider thing. So this is, uh, even though I said I wasn't going to include it specifically, this is a really good card for Striders. So if you are kind of thinking hype about the uh, Axe Meta, this is a good card for that. And again, it's free. Ninjas. This is... What ninja does not want all three of those things? Like, good gracious, this is best best ninja card. It's free. It's mind-blowing. Okay. Okay, so we have Sharpening the Dragon's Claws. This is going to be a pretty well-rounded card uh, in that it gives you a really strong defensive buff. Uh, a really solid, but not quite the highest. And maybe this makes this a good card for a sub-VC. I think that accuracy stacks pretty well. Um, maybe with like a 50 or 60% attack card. Uh, and then accuracy is just good in reliability for getting your damage through. This is going to be good. Um, so one of the issues that Greatswords have is that they just don't have a lot of VCs yet. But I guess eventually that'll be good for them. Dagger's a little bit better in this respect, and it's going to be good for them as well. What? Oh, that's the... that's Lysol. Um, and then we have our Mace class, which is why we are looking at this particular card. Um, and I think that this is definitely a sub-VC for those Mace users. It does luckily have agility on it, which is pretty cool for everybody, but it is attack-based. And I think that, uh... I mean, like... Technically, Mashiri has an absurd amount of, like, physical attack-based uh, stuff in her kit, I think. More than more than you would imagine. Um, maybe it'll help her, but I think it's a solid sub-VC, or maybe even a skip for Mace. Just because Mace is likely to be magic, and some of those other... Like, if that's why you want this card, which is how I'm thinking about this whole video, you might not want this card. So let's move on to this, which is not free. It is an agility up card, so it's going to be super helpful for... I mean, this is going to be kind of a fundamental piece of all of these guys' game plan, right? So, including Dialdo. Dialdo almost especially. Dialdo is going to really want an agility card. Every tank does, right? So this could be really good for him. But this is definitely a strike card, and most important for strike units. And then we have our Devout Staff subclass, which is, you know, your green mages, your more support-based mages, and also, I guess this is considered a support class, Staff Mage, although I, I always kind of thought of it as DPS that might be incidentally tanky, but that always felt kind of incidental. I guess they doubled down when they gave Skahal Courage, but, you know, there's only two Staff Mages in the game that are main job Staff Mages, so, like, it's not a class I think about very often. But I wouldn't have... I definitely wouldn't have thought of that as being supportive. So I... Definitely not that. So I really don't know how to conceptualize the split between Staff, but, um... For these Staff units in particular, if you have a, uh, dreams of a Yuna... <laughs> that collab coming in 2024 to get her up to 140, but you know, like, uh, anyways, I'm not even going to talk about it. This is a strike card. It's a strike card. We all know it's a strike card. Moving on. Okay, another relevant VC from Full Metal Alchemist. This time we've got Red Mage so Sword which for whatever reason includes Charlotte. Doesn't really strike me as a red mage. Also, Fear of Bradley. Uh, archers. So, I, I feel like... I feel like Archers and uh, Gunners being divided really sucks for them. But um, maybe Archer, future Archer meta? This could be cool. Uh, not... I mean, Fina. Nope, she's Missile. Nope, yeah, not even Fina. It is a Ninja Blade card, and I would argue that for the people who don't want this for the Magic Attack Resistance Penetration, that this is arguably a sub-VC, so you're not as worried about that, but uh, for that, uh, for the Ninja group, this is more of a skip. It's 
definitely more of a skip than a free card, which is what I think we had previously. Um, but this is a big one for the Glove VC meta. This is going to be really important for these two within fire. Like this, this right here is fire. <laughs> so it's going to be really important for future fire uh, magic. All right, now we are at the free VC. This is just a powerhouse card. Attack up 50, critical damage 20, critical rate 30. Oh my God. Unfortunately, it went to Sword Knight, which, um, I mean, I guess this is gonna make a lot of legacy tanks hit a lot harder. Huh. It also works for Celeste and Terra, who are considered knights, and I guess they are both tanky in one respect or another. Okay, uh, but this is obviously a strike VC. Very, we, we already know this, but it's also, in addition to making your tanks slap, it is also a mace VC. Again, I'm not sure how I feel about a lot of these mace VCs having a lot of attack forward stuff, but these two things are still beneficial for mace classes, for sure. Um, maybe this is your sub VC, and it is one that comes with agility, which is still arguably makes it a good choice for even people who don't benefit from the magic. Agility is often quite powerful. All right, Master Coral. This came with uh, Vega, so of course it's going to list Axe. Um, these things are pretty great for Axe. This is kind of like the missing piece of the puzzle for Tank Busters and Axes, Axe classes. Um, specifically, Vega and Striders are really Tank Busters. So you can think about guaranteeing their damage on three fronts. Although there's totally more. This is why the meta is so broad. But you can think of attack type penetration, which for them is slash, defense penetration, and counters, like reflex. So if you can get this up to 100, a lot of those units get up to 100 in the other two things. What's stopping you at this point? And there are other things, but you know, it's a little bit of a rhetorical question there, gang. Uh, this is going to be an important card for ninjas. Ninjas are going to love all of this stuff as well. This is a really generic uh, loadout of stuff. It also comes with a really fast Esper. Um, I would talk more about that, but we're really looking at the job-based VCs and trying to understand that. So let's not try to walk and chew gum at the same time. But in addition to having Axe and Ninja Blade, I believe this has both of the staff groups. So this is potentially a really good card if you want to go all in on mages in the future. And if you didn't get scared off by remembering that they can't, uh, they can't chain. They can only chain an element, which is going to give them trouble if there's a lot of elemental chain resistance. However, it's, it's entirely theoretically possible that Gumi counters that by just making mages more powerful or finishers, I don't know. But anyways, this is gonna be a really good card for a lot of people, and even if it weren't a really good card for like every, every, look. Do you like these units? Do you see a unit here that you like? It's gonna work for them. It's going to make them a better unit on a team with other like-minded units. If any of this appeals to you, any of it, this is a cool card. And again, comes with a pretty good Esper. Final VC, we're going limited pull here. This is, uh, these are actually pretty good for main. Um, this is gonna be really good for the, um, for the Energists. And then we're getting, I think this is Devout. Where's the Devout? There's the Devout. This is the Devout uh, staff. And it's going to be really good for them as well. Um, we're seeing, oh, this is Warrior Sword. So we're going to see our Brawlers and our tanks, like King Mott and stuff. So this could be, once again, a decent card 
Um, it's, it's actually pretty cool to see Mont included on this, because once again, this is going to make this a card that works as a pseudo fire card, especially if you're doing, I mean, at least if you're doing Mont, Kefka, and Roy. This is going to be a card that works for all three of those units. And then you've got Ninja, so you could also work in uh, Yuffie. You could also work in Valentine's Eldira. There's actually a lot of fire options that, uh, and, and I'm not necessarily saying that any of these cards are good, but that this card actually, even if you don't care about the magic attack, which has been highlighted this whole time, But my point with this card is that even if you aren't necessarily thinking about building mages, even if you aren't um, thinking about, you know, trying to pull for a limited magic card, even if you are more about the physical applications of fire, this card pretty much overlaps with all of the same reasons that I said that Yuffie's VC works well for fire physical. Really, the magic attack up is the only thing that doesn't work all of those units are going to love this stuff. Um, this is also potentially a really good card for ninjas in general. I'm thinking specifically of Katone, because anything you can do to increase her HP is going to increase her damage through Drain Force, um, which is pretty awesome. And I think her newer, one of her newer abilities gives her healing power up. So it seems like her kid is playing more into Drain Force now. So that's cool. Um, so this could be a really good uh, Katone card, a good ninja card in general. And then, of course, we have, again, uh, the gloves and the the, uh, the devouts um, that are going to be able to benefit from this. So let's say if Minwu is ever particularly... Uh, again, I think I conceptualize this. It's, it's, it's weird how they broadcast this and how this will likely change over time. But this is very much like a pseudo fire card, at least for where fire is in this snapshot of the meta. Because it really includes a lot of the recent fire units in the list. I mean, again, we can we can look at this and I think I can even sort them by fire. Like, look at your fire selection. This is a great fire card. Like, holy crap, I even forgot about Revelka being, uh, being a potential member of this uh, glove, fire glove squad. Um, so, now, uh, unfortunately for Revelka, we just saw Sorel get her upgrades, which is great. It's great that these units are being upgraded. Revelka was one of the last of them, though, so we probably got another, like, I mean, for Global, we probably got another good eight months before she's a 140 unit that has really, uh caught up to, to be included on this team, and maybe this team has gotten a little sour after four months. I mean, Fire has always been pretty precarious, and I think one of the issues with Fire that maybe I didn't take into account in my earlier video more is that holy, holy, holy shit. The one complaint that I think people have always had about Fire is that if you have a good fire team it's because you spent a lot on it um you know i've definitely heard and repeated claims very similar uh about wind and why wind is green because you know money is green it just makes sense um but fire has always kind of been that way except that it's never been good for it um fire is now now actually good for it but i think that this also puts us in a place where down the road again players coming in after these metas or in between these metas or who aren't set up for this or who who didn't get freaking pissaro's card <laughs> during dragon quest without realizing that that was going to be super useful um for people who didn't have that foresight or weren't playing during that time or who just came back for ff7 fire is going to be really unapproachable it's going to remain really unapproachable and I think that, like, theoretically, Fire has a lot of power. And it, looking at the good units in the game, it could be possible to say that. But, like, when you talk about practicality, like, rubber hits the road, like, real shit happening in-game, 
there's just not going to be as many players that are going to be able to rock fire at its fullest potential. Most fire teams are probably going to suck. And that was the last VC I hope, right? Okay, so some summation, some summationary, summational thoughts uh, that I have for this video to sum it all up is that there are two mindsets, and I think they're both equally right and wrong when it comes to looking when when it comes to looking at this game. You can look at it with a bunch of spreadsheets, and you can look at it in terms of power and theory crafting and all of that stuff, and that's that's all well and good. But it's easy sometimes to miss some of the practical issues that absolutely trip things up in practice. Like, for instance, um, one of the things that's going to be really trippy uh, into the future is that I think a lot of free units are units that their shards can be accessible for free or, and I think this also applies to MR units which are much easier to build into 140, that we're going to see a lot of those units being surprisingly powerful. I'm not saying that it's going to become a point where, you know, regular Mashery is at the top of the meta across the board. But I do think it's at a point where having a Mashery that could compete with some of that stuff is possible for a player and it is possible that that, like that or a unit like that could become their best simply because they have an easier access to their shards um, through daily shop purchases. I also think that Lucio is going to be really powerful, a lot more practically powerful than he is on paper because of that. So. A lot of times when we're looking at VCs, I think VCs suffer from this same phenomenon even worse. Because when we look at VCs, we often think of them very isolated. Um, I think a bird's eye view look at VCs is a much better way to do it and a very um, a purpose driven, you know, a job driven look at VCs is probably the smarter way to do it. Now, if you're excited about one of these other metas, I mean, I've shown you how I did this theory crafting. Just come in here and start playing with, uh, start playing with the party effects. Are you really uh, thinking about dagger meta? Wait, really? There's only one UR card for daggers. No way. Do we have? Okay, we have two that they don't have. That makes sense. I was thinking there are a lot more dagger cards that I'm seeing here. So this is also a thing. There's probably going to be a lot of things that are going to come up sooner. I don't think dagger's going to be it from the looks of it, but, you know, Global's definitely going to hit the dagger threshold uh, sooner than JP will. From the looks of it. But if you have any little pet projects, if you're thinking bows could be cool, if you're thinking that guns could be cool, then the ultimate takeaway of this video is that well, guns are actually a little bit close. If we ever get this card. <laughs> also, um, the, the, the suite of missile resistance is also uh, gunner specific too. So gunners can get both of the missile resist cards, both of the modern missile resist cards. So that's missile uh, fighting fire with fire might actually become quite profitable for certain missile teams. Anyways, I'm going to get out of this video before it goes too long. See you in the next one.